Hey there, this is Greg from the It's Funny That Makes It Okay podcast. With the busy Christmas season and New Year's, we've decided to take a little break, and we will be back with you next week live. But until then, enjoy enjoy this uh, past episode from December 30th of 2019, where our special guest that week was Mike Gennard. So... Next week, we'll see you then, and until then, enjoy this flashback, and have a good one. Later. Welcome to It's Funny, That Makes It Okay, a podcast where we talk about what we find funny, strange, off the wall, possibly even a rant from time to time. I'm Doug Meeks. My co-host is Greg Daniel, and here we go. Hello. Hey, everybody. Episode 22. Welcome back. We've got Mike Gennard with us again. Welcome, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Always, thanks. always a, a fan favorite. Yeah, well, <laughs> being as a, I'm the only guest, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point, but yeah. All four of our listeners have really appreciated it when you showed up. That's right, all four of them. <laughs> yep, glad to be back, and it's been a little bit, so yeah, good to be back on the podcast again. Yep, well, and Happy New Year's to everyone coming up here. Yep. Uh, I hope you we're all good... getting ready to celebrate it. Yeah, uh, I dressed Christmas. as Baby New Year today, so yep. the diapers. Yeah, one nice. of you will flip a coin. We'll have to change me when we're done, <laughs> and that won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> the new guy gets stuck with the tax. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we hope everyone had a good uh, good Christmas. I thought Greg was dressed as the old year, but apparently he told me no. That's just how he always I'm, looks. No, I'm Father Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we're getting ready to celebrate New Year's this week. You have any plans for the for the New Year? Uh, I think we're going to go party, party hard, party, big party yeah. in person. Yeah, Mike's wife, well, my daughter, is actually hosting a yeah, party this year. I was going to say we're going to be hosting one. So, so if you'd be, like to come, yeah, yeah, please yeah. just message us. We'll give you the address. <laughs> Mike's picking up the tab, so come on out. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a meet and greet of sorts. Yes. Okay. Good. Well, so um, thinking about the new year, I was thinking, well, what? <clears throat> excuse me, what am I going to do this year? Is there is there any good movies? Is there, are there New Year's movies? Do you ever know of any New Year's movies? Did you, did you think about that? I hadn't until you just brought this up <laughs> yeah, right before the podcast. Yeah, we've like, talked about no, you know, Thanksgiving movies. We talked about Christmas Halloween movies, movies. And, and yeah, there are. There's actually a list of rom com mm, movies, some recommended New Year's movies. Well, let's hear them. And some of these are. I've not even heard of. Some of them are very odd, but we'll just go through. There's 15 of them. I'll just read them real quick. Sounds like our podcast. Most people have <laughs> never heard of them. It's very odd. Yep. That, that's the exact same. All right. Well, number number one they recommend is Poseidon, which actually, <clears throat> that was the remake that they released just a few years ago. But... I'm more, you know, being old. <laughs> I'm saying the Poseidon Adventure. I want the Poseidon Adventure too, because I want Gene Hackman bleeding the people out of the uh, overturned uh, luxury cruiser. Yep. Oh, spoiler alert! Yeah, that was in 1972. <laughs> Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, oh, and Shelley yeah. Winters. Oh, Ernest! Bo- I forgot Ernest Borgnine was in that. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, Mike, you wasn't even born yet when that came out. Yeah, that uh, that one went way over my head. But but it's about a boat that flips over on New Year. It's New Year's Eve, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it flips upside down, and people are trying to escape going through the bottom of the boat. It was kind of at the beginning down. of that uh, period in the seventies where the disaster movies were. Oh yeah, yeah. Because then you had air airplane or airport, airport or airport seventy seven. They had a towering inferno. Yep. I think they had something with earthquakes. earthquakes. Yep. There we go. Charlton Heston. All this is you know all the overacting from the seventies. Like oh. Oh my gosh! And they rip their glasses off yeah. and look at. Can you believe this? We've got to get those people out of there. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So, so Poseidon Adventure. Be Gold one. school if you're going to do it though. Yep. Number two from 1989 when Harry met Sally, Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. Eh. And I'm getting the look of. What is the look you're giving me? Kind of, like, <laughs> kind of. Eh. <laughs> I'll um, have what she's having. That's the only thing I remember. From it, yeah, the, the only line. A rom com. Yeah, a rom com. Again, this is pre Mike. I think all these movies on here are pre Mike. Most likely. You don't know any. They're not Mike approved. <laughs> all right, number three is Ghostbusters two. Yeah. With that was good. Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, too. Harold Ramis, and Ernie Hudson. That was 1989. And that'll get you ready for the Ghostbusters, uh, the third one they're coming out. Yes. 
uh, with with most of the original cast, minus uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, Harold but, Ramis. But but yeah, otherwise they got everybody back, so that'll be interesting. Uh, number four, I've heard of this movie, but I have never seen it. 1995. So actually, this was when you were born, probably. No, you weren't well, born I was yet. 96. You're 96. Just missed the cut on this one. But it's Money Train. Never saw it. It's with J-Lo, Wesley Snipes, and Woody Harrelson. Okay, never saw it. Um, don't even know what it's really about, but Money Train is recommended. Um, Trading Places with David Aykroyd really? and Eddie See, I think Murphy. it's more of a Christmas movie, but I guess it is New Year's, too. It's in that, mm-hmm. the holiday, that, that holiday time. Funny yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good movie. Eddie Murphy's hilarious oh, in that. And I like... I like uh, um, Ackroyd's character too. Yeah, yeah. So that that was in 1983, number six on our list, and this is a very odd one: The Godfather Part Two. Part Two. And I did so. Don't that. watch Part One no. first. <laughs> and I like Part Two. I've seen them both, but I, I couldn't remember why. But I remember now there is a a pivotal scene or section because that movie jumps around. It's kind of a time jumping movie. It goes back and forward and back. And one of the pivotal scenes happens during an, a lavish New Year's Eve party. Ah, uh-huh. so that is. Well, I got to admit, I've never way. seen a yep. Godfather movie. Oh my period. goodness! So, if you had a man card, I would be pulling it again. <laughs> no, we'll I'll take it away. Remember, we changed them to punch cards, uh, so you can punch mine if you want. Well, I think it's been punched out. <laughs> Well, after the 10th one, I get a free... <laughs> a, free a free man card? No, free punch. Oh, free punch. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I think that's how it works, isn't it? Could be. All right. Next one is Boogie Nights. I've never saw that movie. From 1997 with Mark Wahlberg, yeah. Burt Reynolds, yeah. and Julianne Moore. Familiar with the movie. I never saw it. Yep. So we'll blow right past that. Number eight... Bridget Jones Diary, Ugh. 2001. Hey, hey, you're five years old. Renee's, I don't recommend that movie. <laughs> Renee Zellweger. I have seen it. And you've seen it? And my wife wanted to see it, and then she didn't really like it either. So. Did you see it at the theater? No, no, we rented it. Oh, okay. Uh, this one sounds kind of interesting. It's in 1980. New Year's Evil. It's a horror, it's, it's a horror it's, flick. Oh, I thought it would be like uh, Evil Knievel jumping over things on his motorcycle. Nope. Oh, okay. New Year's Evil. It's with Kip Niven. Grant, oh, I love his work. <laughs> Grant Kramer, who I actually do remember from some 80s movies. I don't remember any And Roz movies. Kelly. I'm sure it's fantastic. Yep. I'm sure it's awesome. Cheap, low-budget thriller. Yeah. <laughs> Slasher. Flick. Yep. Yeah, the group of people that go and investigate sounds and places, you're like, oh, that's going to slowly die off one at a time, I'm sure. Yep. So the 10th one, <clears throat> and you got to see the original 1960, 1960 version, is Ocean's Eleven. Oh, yeah. With Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, yeah. Peter Lawford, and Angie Dickinson. I actually liked the remake, though. I didn't. I, I, didn't, I, did I thought too. they did a good job. On but the did, they, did they tie in New Year's to the new one? I don't. I don't remember if they did. Because it said in the old one they were waiting for the strike of midnight to do the robbery. I don't remember that in that. So, other one. Uh, yeah, but the, I like the old one, too. So yeah. You can't go wrong with the with the Rat Pack. No, you can't. And this is one Mike might want to catch up on. This is one, you know, it's a little more modern. Uh, Sex in the City. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, with Sarah uh, Jessica Parker, Kim never Patrell, saw that. Kristen never, Davis, yeah, I've never seen any of those. Cynthia Nixon, no. So, Sex and the City, not in the city, and the city. <laughs> no, that's a whole other movie. <laughs> <laughs> Sex in the City is something else. We can't. We don't know anything about that. It's a whole different movie. <laughs> whole different movie. <laughs> and then there was one from 2011, New Year's Eve. It's a. T- it's titled that, so you almost have to watch that. And that's where the that bunch was a rom com. It, had it a bunch was, of and it had in it. like all these different actors in it. Holly yeah, Bay, I don't see much. Holly Berry, John Bon Jovi was in it. Uh, Leah Michelle, Ashton Kutcher, and I put a bunch of other stars because there was just a whole plethora of people in that movie. Again, to me, it looked very boring. So, all right, on to number thirteen, Sunset Boulevard. From 1950 with William Holden and Gloria Swanson. Never saw that movie. Never saw it. I uh, like old movies, so it'd be, it might be kind of fun to watch. I don't know. 14 is Forrest Gump. That's from 1994. And, of course, Tom Hanks. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's Forrest a good Gump. movie. Forrest Gump. Love Forrest yeah, Gump. Awesome movie. So maybe you want to rewatch that one for New Year's. I might, might have to do that. Yeah. 
And then number 15 is The Apartment from 1960. That's with Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, and Fred McMurray. That could be kind of humorous. It's funny. It's a comedy. Um, So after all that, I kind of made my recommendation based on this list. And my recommendation is is to get riff tracks and pick any one of these movies (laughs) and watch it with riff tracks. (laughs) (laughs) So... That is the New Year's Eve watching list for movies. Nice. So, I don't know if that sounds like much fun. I think I would rather go and uh, play the board games and do that stuff at the uh, the game night that uh, Courtney is planning. <laughs> we might have to put Forrest Gump on or something on, on one of the TVs. Forrest Gump would be okay. That, that probably out of this. Ghostbusters 2 might be okay. Um, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. So get your Rift Tracks account set up and, you know, watch one of these other movies, especially maybe New Year's Evil. That one would be really good with Rift Tracks. So what do we got next? That was... Uh, well, with with New Year's coming up, you know, you hear a lot of, lot of saying, people say, out with the old, in with the new. Uh, we're going to have some resolutions coming up. So I just thought, let's... What are some things that we would like to say out with the old? What are some of the old things that we hope that were in this year that don't get continued or brought forward into the new year? So I, I've got a couple things, some things that I would like to see go away mm-hmm. myself. You'd like to see yourself go away? Yes, I'd like to see myself go away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have some things I'd like to see go away, comma, myself. Go oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Misunderstood there. Yes, I, I needed better punctuation. <laughs> no, so some of the things that, that are out there that just more pet peeve stuff for me. Um, one thing that you hear a lot about this year, and you've been hearing it before this year, but this year it seems like it's really just ramped up is the term microaggressions. Mm-hmm. So people will say, you know, oh, that's, you, got, you can't have microaggressions at work, you can't have microaggressions here. So I, I started looking it up. I found a few articles. Like, First, what are they considering a microaggression? Or what is the definition of a microaggression? So it's a very I found small this in, aggression. <laughs> very tiny. <laughs> and basically that's what it is. So it's uh, Business Insider. They, they had this article. and This just had nine things on there. Um, that you shouldn't say. Uh, I'm not going to go over all nine. Okay. But uh, it says, so their their definition is a microaggression are unconscious expressions of racism or sexism. So basically, um, it says nine things that could be uh, racist or actually racist or sexist or of, of, of offensive. Um, so kind of what my, my thoughts are this. This allows people to be offended about anything at any time. If there's not something to truly be offended of, you can take anything anyone says and twist it around to where, well, I, I didn't like the way he said that. I think that they meant this about me, even though that's not what they said. But you can make it that way. Oh, yeah. That way you can be mad all the time. Yeah. Mad and unhappy because that's where the society is. It's a perpetual not, state of anger. Exactly. <laughs> that, I think that's the theme for the year. Perpetual I think state it is. of anger. <laughs> so, a few of the things they had in there were some of the examples they said. So, like at work, uh, if you have a female boss, you can't go up and say, oh, my, that bo- our boss is crazy. You can't say that. That's offensive, they said. That's sexist. That's in- implying that all women are crazy and they're not logical. They can't think correctly because they say they're crazy. Even though I've said that about male bosses I've had <laughs> numerous times. <laughs> I mean, so I guess even if your female boss is crazy, you're not supposed to say it. You're supposed to say, I don't understand her perspective. That's what you're supposed to say instead of if she's just, uh, you know, irrational. You can't say she's irrational even if she is irrational. So... There's okay, one. So that's one. I like how they included the alternative vocabulary for. Oh yeah, they're, the they're trying to help. You. They're trying to help you. They're, well, that's good. They are very. There's probably a dictionary out there of that alternative words <laughs> to use for your microaggressions. For every there situation, there's a book right Every there. situation needs to have alternative language. Yeah, they also said if you're in a, in a in a in a business and maybe they have minorities or different people, and if you you you. Go up and you say something like, hey, Jim, you turn around, oh, sorry, wrong person. You're not supposed to say that. 
That is racist. They said no. The th- and what they tell you to do? Learn their name. You shouldn't. You should never forget anyone's name because <laughs> that is racist or well, sexist. Well, then. So I... if you got two blonde women there, and you could go up and be like, "Hey, Don. Oh, you're not Don here. I'm sorry. No, it's on you. You should have known that." <laughs> that was, so I, I am racist then in that yes. in that regard it's because nice. I never remember names. <laughs> And this one, I like this one. It says, you should never ask someone, like, where are you from? And this has actually happened to my wife on the phone, because my wife's name is Misha. She was on the phone at a college talking to a parent, and they're talking halfway in it. And she said, the lady just stopped and just said, what are you? <laughs> she goes, pardon me? I'm, I'm human. What do you mean? No, what are you? Where Where are you from? And now, uh, my wife didn't get all upset and offended and like, how oh, well, she dare you and slam the phone down. But <laughs> she's just like, ah, I'm just from Illinois. I don't know what you're wanting me to tell you. But uh, I think some of these people need to quit taking things that people say and making a, such a big deal out of it. And just like, hey, what happened to the old, you know, um, if... if I just lost my whole train of thought. Oh, that's all right. You couldn't. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't. No. So anyway, so basically it's getting to a point where you shouldn't say anything to anyone. Don't take interest in anybody. Don't ask anybody anything. And don't express, go to work. Don't, don't express your interest. Oh, either. no. There's no expressions going on <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> whatsoever. So that was just that was just a couple of them. Like I said, there was nine of them. Oh, another one that says, when if, if you have somebody that, that is working with you, you should say, are you an intern? You look so young. You can't say you look so young because that is, uh, especially towards a woman, because they said that's sexist. That's saying we've, that, said, we've said multiple things about Mike being young tonight. I, <laughs> Uh-oh. Are we I hope we haven't triggered your microaggressions. I, a little bit. These microaggressions are becoming macroaggressions. Yes, they are. Very rapidly. <laughs> yeah, so it, and then what they're saying is like if an older colleague tells a junior female you look so young that it makes them feel inferior or undermines their authority on the job. So I guess you, you never comment on a person's looks, good or bad. Never comment on their age. Don't ask them their age. Don't ask them any personal questions of any kind. Like I said, just don't get involved with any of your coworkers. Just uh, go do your job. Keep your mouth shut. Do your job. And uh, basically answer in uh, like a robotic voice to them so that they can't, <laughs> they can't get any kind of uh, feeling or vibe from you at all. That's why I, that's why I sit quietly in my corner at work. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So microaggressions are one thing that I'd like to to see go away. Okay. What else we got? Um, I got I got one other term <clears throat> that I absolutely hate. All right. Let's and hear, you hear it. About triggered. 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 Yeah. And I looked that one up. The definition in the dictionary said a, a sudden negative reaction to seeing, hearing, or experiencing something. You find upsetting. It's not that it actually is upsetting. If you have a problem with it at all, so again, basically, it's any reason for you to get upset at all. If you don't like something somebody's doing, you've been triggered, and you should be upset about it. Uh, and so should everyone else. Too. Yeah. So, so this made me think too. Like when we were kids growing up, we were taught to say like sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. You know, or I know you are, but what am I? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're all out classic. of those. Yeah, if you say anything, you can get mad, you can get upset, you can go and have someone kicked out of school, <laughs> you could have them shut down, you can have them whatever. Uh, I I found a uh, an article here from uh, a, a play, Everyday Feminism. Uh, you know, as you know, I'm a oh, subscriber. I read, that, I read that monthly. Yeah. I'm a, well, their swimsuit edition is fantastic. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. And then, you know, at the end of every article, they always put down a few recipes, which is nice. <laughs> and my favorite is the uh, end of the year vacuum cleaner um, comparisons, where they, they list the the best vacuum cleaners, so that way they make sure the ladies get all the best vacuum cleaners that are out there. Because you don't want to buy a shoddy vacuum cleaner and yeah, have to double your workload. Uh, so, yeah, everyday feminism, very good, very exciting. But this article about it, uh, when I clicked on it, I thought, well, let's just read what they had to say about being triggered. Um, and at the very beginning of it, before you even get into the article, there's a little blurb, and it says, editor's note. And I even found this was, this kind of just <laughs> typifies the whole meaning. It says, like this phenomenal article. I love how humble they <laughs> they're, they're are. They're hyping <laughs> so, it up. Yeah. So, like this phenomenal article, everyday feminism definitely believes in giving people a heads up 
about material that might provoke a reader's trauma. However, we use the phrase content warning now instead of trigger warning, as the word trigger relies on and evokes violent weaponry imagery. This could be traumatizing to folks who have suffered military police, other forms of violence. So while warnings are necessary and the points in this article are right on, we strongly encourage the term content warning instead of trigger warning. Couldn't and this said- is on an article about triggered wa- uh, and trigger warnings. So at the very beginning, like we're not going to use it anymore in this article. We used, for- it, we used it at the headline and <laughs> in this little box. And now we're going to stop because people are too triggered from this word. Couldn't the, couldn't the writer be offended by the use of content warning? <laughs> it could be. That's what they do. They write content. And now we're calling it all warnings of content. <laughs> That's what I said. Everything can be a trigger now. So you could use oh, this. You use trigger. You can use this to beat up anything you like or anything you don't like. And you see, well, that triggered me. That triggered me. This podcast is probably triggering all kinds of people now. So <laughs> I was going to say, how out of the- We don't apologize for any of it. You should know this is... We should put a warning back at the beginning. A content warning? A content warning. Well, no, know. a triggered warning. How many of the four the four listeners, how many of them are triggered right now? <laughs> we actually have like three. Yeah. We have like 20 maybe sometimes. So, well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> we have a few. Not after, after this episode. After this we have a controversial few, uh, episode. A few international. We yeah, have some international. some international people. Hello, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got that that awkward pause was brought to you by (laughs) Smith. We were all triggered. Smith and Wesson Gun Company, (laughs) because they make triggers. That's right. (laughs) So anyway, those were the couple things: microaggressions triggered. I'd like to see them just go away. Uh, I'd like things to get more simplified. If somebody has a problem with somebody, go to them and talk to them about it. Don't don't blow it up out of proportion. Well, I, I've got one that kind of builds off Doug's two. Um, it's sort of a, I don't know, I, I don't want to call it a, a a political topic, but I guess in a way it is. So I'll touch on cancel culture. It's a, a relatively recent thing, um, kind of been building up over the last few years. We may experience that after these last few. I know. Uh, I was like, few segments. I think we're going to be up next. <laughs> I get that when I'm working on my computer. I, it comes up okay or cancel. I get yeah. cancel culture. I belong to the cancel culture. I cancel. Yeah, all the time. cancel culture is ridiculous. <laughs> I'll, I'll give kind of the listeners who maybe aren't familiar with it. I'll give them kind of a brief background on it. Um, so this website says cancel culture, also known as call out culture, involves essentially boycotting a person. Because of his or her, you, you got to have that in there. Or they. Or they. How do they identify? See, right they, there. We, right, right there. This article is, is triggered. I am going to complain. Triggered because their pronoun is not in there. They didn't ask what my pronoun was. How many readers are triggered because of this article? Anyway, because of their problematic behaviors or actions, when the public decides someone is canceled, it will avoid supporting or engaging with them, often resulting in a large or sharp decline in that person's relevance or popularity. So, essentially, cancel culture is using mass power to essentially get someone canceled. Using kind of the the public mass to take away someone's platform, essentially. And I feel like there have been instances where cancel culture has done good. Um, in several instances I, won't, instances I won't go into, but... Particularly some that have called out some particularly disgusting sexual acts. I feel like it, it's done a good job um, kind of bringing to light some, some of the stuff that goes on within certain industries. But to a point, it almost becomes like a weapon for anyone who doesn't like a particular thing, a show, whether that's a show, a particular person, person and their opinions and their viewpoints – Essentially, it's a way to silence them for something as simple as having an opinion that you may not agree with, um, which I, I think is is a shame when it's used that way um, because it, I feel everyone has an opinion and should be entitled to their opinion. Um, I know. It's, 
<laughs> well, right, there you go. So I'm going to cancel Greg's Mike. Getting the I'm going to cancel Mike. Right now I'm going to cancel Mike out of this. Well, I'm the editor, so I can just uh, oh, everything Mike just said. <laughs> so when you don't hear me I think again, I've experienced some of that in the past. <laughs> when you don't hear me again for the rest of the podcast, I've been canceled. See, it's cancel culture. <laughs> There'll be long periods of silence. <laughs> what do you think about that, Mike? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. I, I, especially in the, in the comic or the stand-up community. Oh, they're seen a bad. Lot of that. Yeah. And again, it, it may be stuff that I don't particularly <laughs> like. But my my thing with it is, and so so who are we appointing to decide what should be listened to and what shouldn't? What do I what I find offensive? Other people may think is fine. But what I say that I think is fine, someone else may think is offensive. So I think you either have to have. Free speech for all or free speech for none, whether that means you're offended by it or not. And what happened, like, when we were growing up, if, if you didn't like something, there were people that would protest a little bit or something, but most of the time it was just, you just turned the channel, or I didn't yeah, support didn't, it, or didn't I didn't, to that. I yeah. turned, it, turned the TV off. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they would, and that's what they used to tell you, the people that were doing the finish, like, well, if you don't like it, just turn it off. And now those people are like, no, not only are we going to shut you down, we're going to make it impossible for you. To make a living or do anything. Or even my biggest thing with it is is once a person is canceled, they don't have really an opportunity to either, you know, express um, you know, they're they're sorry for their actions, give them a chance to, to learn or grow from whatever whatever it was that got them canceled. And one of my biggest complaints about the whole thing is most of the stuff that I see about cancel culture happens when a person is a kid. You know, however many years ago in the past. Um, uh, one of the examples I'm thinking of was, I'm thinking of like a, a I was watching a draft. Uh, I think it was a football draft, an NFL draft. There was a kid on there who was, you know, he's a young college kid. Um, he was supposed to be one of the top picks in the draft. And <clears throat> there was a video from, you know, the, the start of his college career four years ago when he was smoking a, a blunt. You know, sure, it's not legal, but somebody found it, you know, must have had a problem with him, didn't want him to succeed, and posted it, blew up, went viral on social media, and he was supposed to be, like I said, one of the top picks in the draft, ended up falling however many spots. Um, so it's just, it's a shame, I feel like, when things get dug up from the past, when someone makes mistakes, makes life mistakes. That well, we, we all you, do. Especially we when you do. think about that, <clears throat> that's becoming legal in a lot of states now. Right. So, <clears throat> for a guy's career to get ru- ruined, or I don't know if it's ruined, but, you know, really taken down because of that is crazy. Uh, well, I like to, and they'll also like the cancel culture, will like to go into the past, and uh, they've done this with sitcoms. Fine thing. At the time, was funny and everything, but right. now it they fine. find it in a. Well, it still is, but they find it in a, or they find it offensive. So now they want to go. Not only they have those episodes. Sometimes they're scrubbed. You can't find them online because somebody found them offensive. But then they also will no longer support those actors. Actors because you know thirty years ago they did this, which just they did it, and everybody was like, oh yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. And now no, this generation finds it offensive. So. We're going to cancel him from ever doing anything else from here on out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or, or <clears throat> pulling up, you know, a kid, kid's tweets. <sighs> you know, he, he's a young kid. Or, you know, we all say stuff we don't necessarily mean. You know, whether that's in a joking context or, or whatever. You know, we've all had slip ups like that, and and to use that stuff to to ruin a person's life essentially I just I, I just don't think it's fair okay. yeah I think I'm glad they didn't have uh, social media when I, was, oh, when I was a kid me too <laughs> I'd have been in big trouble yeah um, yeah I was I I don't know it, it just get, it gets annoying just all the the little well, the things you think are that will be funny at you know 14 and 16 years old uh, it, it changes. It, it, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. it's offensive yeah. when you're 14 or 16 because you mm-hmm. you push the envelope. You try to be shocking and jarring, and and back then we could just like tell our friends. Yeah, and, and now you group. can like put it online, and it's boom, it's out there. Mm-hmm. So you know, and their their uh, decision making and 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 their brain isn't fully developed, and and they'll do exactly. things that like. And then it's out once it's out there too. It's, it's out there forever. It yeah. it's always out there. So you know they can be forty years old going out for a promotion, and they're gonna. Ah, we found this on Twitter from when you were fourteen. It's like, 
you're done. You're done. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, one thing I really had uh, as far as things uh, I'd like to see go away would be, and it won't, it won't go away, but is political posts on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> not going away. It's, it's, yeah, I could not it's agree with you so more, annoying. but it's such a, a lofty uh, <laughs> And I'm talking goal. both sides of the aisle. I don't look at Facebook for a political post. You know, just let me see my friends' posts, my friends' pictures, family pictures, stuff like that. I don't need all. Well, advertising would be another whole thing, but that. <laughs> well, I think it'd be interesting if they, if they could truly find out how many people does it affect where they've changed their votes because of something you've read. I, none for me, because I automatically assume everything on Facebook, whether I agree with it or not, is wrong. <laughs> like, right. no, this is, this is garbage. <laughs> I'll have to look this up. I feel like I'm that's, not a safe, it. that's a safe assumption to operate under. Yeah. Unless it comes from the, the page, it's funny, that makes it okay. That is gospel. <laughs> yeah, that is gospel. It's been that researched. A, yes, yes. <laughs> Vetted. It is 100% true. <laughs> uh, so, so really, yeah, That's I, I didn't really have a lot. I mean, there's some phrases I'd like to see gone, like woke. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, we talked about woke on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see that phrase gone. Yeah. And none of this stuff that we're talking about is going away. These, like I said, these are just things that more pet peeves. Honestly, more rant. <laughs> this is really, for the stuff we've talked about, this is just the tip of the iceberg oh, for yeah. this stuff, honestly. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nowhere near. We could start a whole away. other podcast and just do it on nothing but things we want to see go away. I can think of one more thing. The Illinois governor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mr. The worst tax state. increase. Oh, it's the worst state ever. <laughs> so, wow. But we won't go into that. We're, yeah, we're, we're getting really, borderline we can, political anyway. Yeah. yeah, this is what from... We were trying to be more funny, so now we're just getting angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping angry the table man. over. That's it! I'm at it! <laughs> if you're this crashing sound. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that was out with the old. Let's, let's say in with the new. So, do you have any New Year's resolutions, things that you want to try? Any of... I've got a few, but I'll, I'll, I'll if you guys have some. Well, I mean, I've got the standards. You know, I want to lose some weight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and exactly. they say you should put a goal, a number to it, and you should buy win and all that sort of thing. Um, but I'll, and I'll probably do some of that. Um, you know, I'd like to make this uh, podcast more successful, which uh, push it out there a little more, advertise it. Six it, listeners. Increase the yeah, six. <laughs> we're at four. Let's go to six, man. Let's, oh, let's push the envelope and go for eight. Eight. We're doubling our that, 100% increase. That would be lofty. That's a lofty goal. Yeah, yeah, I know. That is pretty pretty large. But, uh, no, we appreciate all the it. And there, it's more than that. But uh, we're just having a little fun here. Yeah, I do but music no. stuff. I'd like, to, I'd like to make myself record, like... Maybe a song every other month. I don't think I could do a song a month, but maybe a song every other month. A couple of originals. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah. Good. You know, you were saying about when you put put a goal out there, but the thing I don't like, I don't like to put a, a hard goal for the one reason. When I don't Because you won't goal, succeed. I won't, <laughs> and I don't. But you know what it does? It, dep- it kind of makes me want to give it like, oh, what's the point of that? So I try to make, like, okay, I'm just going to try to, let's just see if I can... I can lose or I can do this on average over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Now, I may have a number in my head. That, so I don't know what, may, what the difference is, but I don't want to put it down. like, no, I'm just going to go. So if, if I don't hit it, not a big deal. I don't go. Because my personality is if I don't hit it, I do start getting like, well, this is worthless. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not even going to try. What's the point of trying? And I just quit. So I don't want to do that. Have you ever set a goal, like a New Year's resolution, and like a week later you've already not done it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, but yeah, those are, you know, some of the standard ones. But, yeah, the music thing, I'd like to do, you know, more of that. That'd probably be one. Yeah, Mike, anything for, for you? Or? No, sir, yeah, we, we've got a couple. Um, we'd like to meet some just financial savings goals that we've set for ourselves, yeah. just kind of as a, as a young uh, married couple. Um, and we've be, also... Being all financially responsible. Oh, uh, we're trying. <laughs> and not that we just, like, throw our money away, but uh, we just... Another one we'd Planning like to... Planning lavish New Year's Eve <laughs> parties, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're starting off on a good, on a good foot there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do that. <laughs> That's a valid point, actually. I didn't really consider that. Yeah. Well, actually, but the, technically, that's it. still in the 31st. So that's still this. You're, uh, you got to spend all the money you can right now. Because it's stopping 2020. <laughs> that's right. That is the 31st. Yeah. So you're still good. 
Yeah, and uh, I just yeah some other the standard ones, you know. But uh, I, I think one of our or the main standard ones, if you will, is to just stop eating out as much. Uh, we do it a little bit more than we'd like to right now. That's and difficult. It is. It, it is, is hard. But yeah, those are kind of our our big ones for this year. Okay, for me, I, I got I, I want to try to get in better shape. I lost some weight last year, which was good, but then from like Thanksgiving. To Christmas, I gained a little over half of it back. Yeah, we've talked which about I was Reese's, disappointed. Reese's pumpkin, They're Reese's killing trees. me. <laughs> In fact, for Christmas, I had my stocking was full of Reese's trees. I looked at it like, oh no! <laughs> so you got to eat them all before the first. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> they're all gone. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try to get into shape. I'm actually going to go out and do the, the whole thing. Where I'm going to, I, I used to belong to a gym. I kind of quit last year, and I'm going to try to go back, get into the gym, try to try to get myself into a shape other than round, <laughs> something something that's <laughs> rotund, some kind of a tapered <laughs> look. Anyway, hopefully bigger at the top than the bottom. You know, not <laughs> more like a triangle. Not, yeah, not, not not triangle, but. Uh, that's that's kind of where I'm I'm heading now, uh, but so I was thinking about the gym and when I used to go to the gym and thing. I thought there needs to be a list or or, or paper out for people for of gym etiquette because people have no gym etiquette. No, they the don't. Gym. They're the worst. And so here's a few of the things that I got that I would I would like to see people not do. I don't know if you guys have ever encountered this guy. The guy that he monopolizes like four pieces of equipment. Yes. So he'll set them all up. He's only using one at a time. But if you, I've walked up to a piece of you know machine. He's he's on the bench press. So I'll walk up to like the butterfly press and I'll I'll put my I'll go to move it and I'll hear the guy. Hey hey, I'm using that. Like, really? Right now you're bench pressing. And so no, he's got all these stations set up that he's like cross going. He's jumping to real quick and he doesn't want anybody. They jump in. It's like this isn't your personal gym. We all have to use the equipment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's always he's always some guy that's just a little in shape, but he's not like the real buff, huge guy. He's like, hey, I am, I'm using all these. I, I need all this equipment. It's like when your kids and your brothers. Yeah, you know, it's like I've got the. I'm, I'm doing I'm that. I'm still playing with that ball, even though I've got my army men out. <laughs> yeah, so don't touch that. So I'd like to see that disappear, or the guy that. He's sitting on a machine, and he does a set of whatever, you know, he does curls or presses, and he gets done, and he just sits there, and then he gets his phone out, and he kind of leans forward on one arm, and he starts looking at his phone and updating. It's like, if you get, do your set, get off so someone else can get on, and do whatever you're doing with your phone, updating your status. Maybe he's curling his Sweaty phone. selfie or whatever the crap you're doing, <laughs> but, but get off of the machine. <laughs> So again, uh, this is this whole podcast is kind of turning into a rant. I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm getting all worked up. Maybe that should be one of my resolutions. I think it should be. so worked up over small and significant stuff. But then what would I have to look forward to? Yeah, every day I get up. What will irritate me today? So you're getting triggered at the club. I'm getting triggered <laughs> at the gym. The club sound like kunk, 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 kunk. At the gym. I don't do too much clubbing. <laughs> Just when the, there's the uh, farmer thing in town. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was yes. from a previous episode. Yes, yes. Uh, that was the gentleman's club. Yes, the gentleman's club. <laughs> uh, the other thing I would like to see, I don't know if you guys have encountered this, but I have. You're all done. You're like, all right, I'm just going to head back to the locker room, quick shower, change clothes, get out of here. You come in, and there's the one naked dude that just likes to wander oh, yeah. around the gym. And he's usually standing at the sink. So when you walk yeah. in, that's the first thing. Blow drying yeah. his hair. Or, or worse, there was a guy who was at the gym I used to go to years ago. He would blow dry his toes. He would take his toes. And, I'm like, how much hair do you have on your toes where you're having to blow Are dry them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's got his toes. He's like blow drying the toes. And then he'll get up and he'll blow dry completely naked. Completely naked, just blow drying his hair, uh, brushing his teeth. He would do all this stuff completely naked. Has he ever heard of a towel? (laughs) I don't know. Well, there were four old guys at the one out here that they would go sit in the hot tub naked. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, of course, I never sat in the hot tub. (laughs) Uh, We're staying out of there. How do you know they were naked? (laughs) I've seen them go. I've seen them go in. (laughs) 
I checked every time. They kept me there. <laughs> no, but the, yeah, the naked guy there walk out. When I would go in, I would usually walk in. I would put the towel around. Now, I'm approved, maybe. I'd put the towel around me while I'm dressed. I would disrobe, so I had the towel around me, go to the shower, pull the curtain shut, throw the shower over the thing, get washed up, put the towel on me, go back. And again, in the men's room, you, there's not a lot of looking around, not a lot of joking around. I, I'm pretty much looking down at the floor. I get to my locker. I want to look at my locker. Yeah. I don't want to stand there. Yeah, and your look eyes are, you almost need those horse things on the side of your, you're just focused. Yeah. And then I got a couple guys in there too that they, they're, it's like they are, their towel, it's like a hand towel. It's barely, I'm like, <laughs> and they'll hold on to the side here, but it's, a, there's way too much flesh exposed for me, man. <laughs> And if yeah. I go up, there's a guy right in front of my locker. I'll just wait. But I've had him crowd up, like, oh, excuse me. I don't need you brushing into me. I don't need us rubbing thighs or anything here. Let's let's separate a little bit. How about a little elbow room? It's just, uh, yeah. So, I, I, I did. I, I'm a germaphobe. I've got issues. I know that. I will admit. I've got problems. Well, you were talking about this the other day, and I was telling you that, uh, you know, my I'm a private person when it comes to things like bathrooms, and we've talked about yeah, peeing. Around you don't the- even you don't even want people to hear you pee when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> so Greg, Greg uses a silencer. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how that would work. I like it though. <laughs> but I would be like the in the in the locker room. I'd be like the people you would see at the halftime of like sporting events where they like change clothes real fast. <laughs> you know, it's like I could walk in in my gym outfit and go, shoo, shoo, and I'm in my work clothes. <laughs> That's the kind of people I want in the locker room. In and out, let's go. I don't want the guys hanging out in there. Yeah. Or you get the guy that will go in there and sit in this towel on the phone and want to like talk, blah, blah, blah. That's like, dude, let's go, man. So, again, yeah. these are just all some pet peeves of mine. Yes. I think we said we multiple times we've done this started this podcast as kind of a it's more therapy. <laughs> it's more therapy for us. So. That was the name. The longer you're married, you'll you realize that it is. It, it's helpful. <laughs> you get here, you get a gripe to this microphone and and the fifteen to twenty people look, I keep jumping it up <laughs> that we have listening to us. <laughs> oh, we also have uh hello Canadian and uh, UK members out there. Yes, we do have yes. a few of those. Happy Boxing Day last week too. <laughs> boxing, boxing day. I'm not sure what Boxing Day is, but whatever it was, yes. I hope it was a happy. I hope it was good. All right. Well, so that's kind of we kind of talked a little bit about resolutions and um, you know things like going to the gym, things like that. <clears throat> well, there's also like traditions that people have for New Year's. Do you have any New Year's traditions? Eat too much junk. Right? Yeah, eat junk. <laughs> well, like, did you ever watch the uh, the the New York countdown? You know, the ball being dropped. Would a little bit, but I wouldn't call it a tradition. Uh, I mean, my, my yeah. dad hated that kind of stuff. So, if he was in control, no. And you step to midnight, first kiss with the wife at midnight. Yeah, yeah. And I remember many years ago, the church I went to would get the bowling alley all night. And we would bowl all night long. Yeah, I mean, you really bowl fun. a ton yeah. of games, man. Yeah. Arms falling off the other <laughs> night. But that was kind of a tradition. But it made me think of traditions, you know. And so I started looking up. And uh, it's funny. There's some different countries have some rather odd traditions uh, to bring in the new year. So I'm going to read off seven of them here. Of course, and, they probably think, oh, like, who bang on pots and pans for? <laughs> true, true. Bang on pots and pans. I do remember pans. doing that as kids, going yeah. out banging on pots and pans. Yep, we did do that, too. Uh, I don't know why we were doing I it. I don't either, but we did. King, 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 king. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that. And we lived out in the country, so we had no neighbors. So, like, anybody's hear anything. <laughs> well, our, our friends to the south in Ecuador, what they do is scarecrow burning. Okay? Okay. To banish any ill fortune or bad things that happened in the past year, Ecuadorians set fire to scarecrows filled with paper at midnight on New Year's Eve. They also burn photographs of things that repre- represent the past year. No. <laughs> what photograph? Nowadays you have to burn your phone. <laughs> <laughs> to burn your photographs. Do they burn the stuff that they want canceled? Probably. Or the stuff that triggers them? Things that trigger them, yeah. They, they're going to burn that because, you know, they want to go into the new year with a clean slate. Untriggered and uncanceled. <laughs> so, all right. Well, number two is in the Philippines. And they do a thing called round things. 
Okay. In the Philippines, New Year is about one thing and one thing only, cold, hard cash. I oh. like that. Let's go to the Philippines. Cha-ching. Hoping to bring prosperity and wealth for the year ahead, Filipino, Filipino people try to use as many round things as possible to represent coins and wealth. Round clothes, round food, you name it. Uh, you name it. If it's round, they want it. Okay. So... All right, so round things in the Philippines. I'm seeing a, an opportunity for us to make some money next year. We get a bunch of round stuff and head to the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> if I go, they'll probably say, hey, he's round. He's round. <laughs> <laughs> so number three, this, this one's kind of interesting, is broken plates, and that's in Denmark. If you're, if you're ever in Denmark and wake up to find a pile of smashed crockery outside your door, it's probably New Year's Eve. Unused plates are saved up all year until the 31st of December when they are hurled at front doors of your friends and family <laughs> in a strangely vandalistic display of affection. <laughs> But Can you imagine opening the door? vandalized for the New Year's I was, I was on board until we started like chucking it at each other's front doors. Yeah, <laughs> it's the front door, man. <laughs> yeah, I thought they may just go outside and like smash it on the ground. I know they meant, oh, no, like, vandalized they, Yeah, no, they're hurling it at the doors. All right. This one is kind of like the opposite of the Filipino holiday like, tradition. Uh, <laughs> they're like trying to get money. And what country and was this again? This was Denmark. Denmark. Wow. They don't seem like overly violent, but I, maybe they get it all out in one day. Ah, maybe that's right. Right. Yeah, we're going to throw plates. We have the day of violence. Yeah, we're good. I'm imagining this is like the purge. <laughs> this is one night, just driving around. The G-rated purge. Sharp, sharp, purge. Sharpening, your, sharpening your plates. We break a bunch of plates. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy's get, got an unbreakable plate he's throwing. It's like, I can't get my print plate to break. <laughs> we only use paper plates. I don't know how that works. Or styrofoam. <laughs> well, that would go with the round thing. So you'd have to go back to the There we go. Things. All right, number four is Spain, and what they do is eat twelve grapes at the clock as the clock counts down to twelve, and people around the world are preparing to watch fireworks and drunkenly kiss each other. Spaniards are staring at bunches of grapes with a steely gaze. This challenge involves stuffing your face with twelve grapes, one for every ring of the bell. Succeed, and you've got good luck for the year ahead. Ooh. How hard that is it to like eat fun. 12 grapes? I wouldn't think it would be that hard. <laughs> bing, Maybe they're gigantic bing. grapes. Was well, this like all at once? Is that what it's saying? Like you, you gotta well, it says all. one for each hour. So I would Maybe there's only a bowl of 12 grapes and you're fighting everybody for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's in the last, like, you know, in the countdown, 10 times. <laughs> Maybe you got to eat them. <laughs> well, still, you just pop them in and I, would I think. think. I don't know. Maybe and if not. you wedge one in your throat, well, you're, it's not going to be a good year for you, probably. <laughs> it's already the sign of bad luck right there. Yep. So, number five, in Peru, they have the, I don't know how to say this, Takanakui Festival. This annual Peruvian festival held at the end of December is all about people beating the daylights out of each other. Competitive, competitive <laughs> violence around the world at New Year's. Competitors face off in a ring for a round of bare knuckle brawling, which is overseen by local policemen. <laughs> Takanakui literally means when the blood is boiling, but apparently all of the fights are friendly and represent a fresh start for the new year. <laughs> Sounds friendly when you're beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> Imagine this is like the airing of grievances. <laughs> yeah, it's like a festival. You, yeah. you kind of like call someone out like, I've got a fight to pick with you. Do the women participate? I don't want to. Anybody, you know, I guess. It's got to be fair. You know? This is from when all those micro trans. Or <laughs> yeah, that's right. Micro triggering all that stuff. It's yeah, it's it all built up. There'd probably be a whole lot less of that if you did this kind of stuff. You get to call somebody out on New Year's and beat the crap out of them? I think some of these. I got your microaggression right here. These countries, I don't know. They might have a they might solution have. to some of this they stuff. They might. Yeah, so that's in Peru. So, <clears throat> okay, the next one is in Japan. This is our sixth one, and it's called 108 Rings. Think, think the countdown of 12 rings takes too long. Try 108 on for size. In Japan, the bells are rang 108 times in a Buddhist tradition that is believed to banish all human sins. It is, it's also good luck to be smiling or laughing going into the new year. <laughs> but who knows how you can be in a good mood after having to sit through the prolonged ringing. Do they so, have to do it like in the last 60 seconds? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, and I picture, you know, it's probably one of those big gongs. That, uh, maybe not, but I, I'm trying to think of 
I've seen some of those. <clears throat> yeah, did I just the temples bong, the band. bong. Yeah, you do that 108 times. That's that would be tough. I might have a little microaggression about that. <laughs> I might would do. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, the last one, number seven, is colored underwear. <laughs> South America. Okay. In South America, countries such as Mexico, Bolivia, and Brazil, your fortunes for the year ahead, your fortunes for the year ahead are all. I just had a bad image in my head. Are all decided by your underpants. Oh, lay those who those who want to find love wear red underwear for New Year. Okay. Whilst gold diggers should opt for yellow, which brings wealth and luck. If you're just after. If you're just after a bit of peace for New Year's, some white pants should do the trick nicely. <laughs> some tidy whities. Okay. What does brown signify? <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. <laughs> you're going to have a very bad year. <laughs> a very really bad year. <laughs> do you like show each other like which underwear you picked? <laughs> and what, you you, what if somebody's wearing like spots? <laughs> You better go see the doctor. I don't know. <laughs> and what about the guy that's going commando? <laughs> that's crazy, Jose. I don't know. He, he don't wants know. he wants nothing for the new year, and he's got it. freedom. That represents freedom. freedom. <laughs> that represents freedom. Yes. I'm going commando. Just picture you, that. there's like a party somewhere, and it's like, hey, what color underwear underwear are you wearing tonight? You got your red ones on. <laughs> Maybe you should go home and tell people, i got a great New Year's tradition we can start with our party. <laughs> We're going to update our our uh, Facebook invite and make sure everybody wears different underwear. Send Show us, us your pictures. At midnight, we're all going to drop our pants. <laughs> it's a whole new thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if they do that. I mean, yeah, because how do they? This may be Mike's last podcast with us. I don't know if he'll be allowed to come back after this. <laughs> Oh, so okay. Well, I think we're we're done with all of our New Year's ranting and raving and microaggressing and triggering and for now being woke and all those sorts. Unless of things. something reminds me and I go off on a tangent again, I'll try not to. <laughs> so I think we're going to move into a segment, and I think we mostly have like just news stories, just that things we, I've that yeah, we found yeah. uh, for our. It's funny that. So if you haven't okay. been triggered or offended or microaggressed up to this point. Hold on to your underwear, because here it comes. <laughs> your colored underwear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, I've got, I'll, I'll try to make them fairly quick, because i got four things here that I've heard over the last couple of weeks that have just really kind of stuck with me. Uh, the stuck first one. Crawl. Stuck in my crawl. The first one, uh, the news headline. The headline itself was, was called, Chips, comma, Infidelity Prompted Domestic Strangle. <laughs> I'll just read the story real quick, and yes. then, then we can, it's very we can odd talk sounding. about it. So, a Florida woman was arrested for allegedly throttling her girlfriend during an acrimonious 1.30 a.m. argument over chips and infidelity, investigators say. An arrest affidavit did not provide specifics about the type of chips, potato, tortilla, uh, tortilla. I did that one for my for my son. He hates it when I do tortilla. Tortilla. <laughs> Corn. Um or the alleged strain. Police charged that Patricia and Isaac, 27, and her girlfriend of eight years were arguing early Friday when the dispute turned physical. Isaac allegedly grabbed the victim by the throat with both hands. The 27-year-old victim told the police she could not breathe, grasped for air once her throat was released. Cops questioned Isaac at the couple's home where she admitted that she punched the victim and put her in a headline. So I just thought it was funny that that says that the the, uh, the argument was over chips, yeah, and infidelity. That <laughs> chips was the first thing that they list. <laughs> it's not, you know, I'm ticked off that you've been sleeping around, but if you bring these wavy chips home one more time, I'm at <laughs> the chips and infidelity. Now I'm a little disappointed. And you're gonna. This isn't the only one, but the journalism in this country has really gone down. Yeah, I mean, it's reached a new low. We're not talking Cronkite or Murrow, because the first thing I want to know is what type of chips caused this. Now, it does say that the, the woman who did the assaulting, she works at a public supermarket, so maybe she works in the chips aisle, and this woman, you know, 
disrespected the chips. Maybe she's got a, a chip fetish. <laughs> you know, you bought the wrong chips. How dare you? I think she has a chip on her shoulder. Maybe she brought home Ooh. Pringles and she said, you know, Pringles are not a chip. Yeah. They're a crisp. Yeah. You know I hate that. <laughs> so anyway, I found out you've been eating other chips. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe That's that was infidelity, it. See. Maybe she brought home like... I never have Pringles at the house. Where did these come from? So maybe that's the infidelity. That's the one. The chip. the chip infidelity. That could be. You're cheating on me. So chips and infidelity. Chips. Uh, yeah, the second thing says Wisconsin men brawled after argument. So uh, this is this sounds like a very manly article. Yeah, I started yeah. reading it. So a bloody fist fight between yeah, you two big Wisconsin drunken guys. Wisconsin men was triggered by an argument. The police say the brawlers attended the Green Bay Packers game. So, they're Packers fans. I saw your look already, Mike. You're like, oh, figures. Yeah. Packers fans. <laughs> they probably still had their cheese wedges on their head. And they drove to a bar afterwards where they continued to consume alcohol. That's after, a surprise. Yes. <laughs> after returning to the SUV, the duo got into an argument and began trading blows. They eventually exited the vehicle and began trying to flag down passing cars, they said, which brought the attention of the police department. Upon approaching the duo at uh, 12.45 a.m., a deputy encountered the driver, who appeared to be extremely intoxicated, <laughs> and struggled to keep his balance. Uh, he had difficulty answering the cops' questions, had abrasions to his face, one eye was swollen nearly shut, and his shirt and pants were covered in blood. Uh, the driver claimed his pal... It became a little feisty. That's what it says in quotes. Feisty. <laughs> I'm not picturing Packer fans becoming drunk. feisty. Yeah, and had a fresh bruise on his neck, explained the police. This is the best part. So you're like, mm, you know, that, that could happen. Guys go to a game, start drinking, they go to a bar, they get liquored up, get in an argument, get in a yeah. fight. That happens. Something about the football game. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, they began to argue about the CBS sitcom, sitcom, how I Met Your Mother, where they were driving, when the dispute turned violent. <laughs> this is, again, I read the whole article, and nowhere in the article does a journalist address what was the argument about the sitcom. Now, you know, if guys get into an argument about a sitcom, I gotta know. That's my first question. Now, <laughs> yeah, what, what was they the, arguing about? That is the question. What, what was the argument? Because you gotta take sides. Like, who was right or wrong? <laughs> No, so they go to a... a, a, The second thing, how does that even start? You're at a football game. They're big Packers fans. You're drinking. You're watching the game. Presumably the Packers win because they're a good team. They're winning. So you go back to the bar. You're drinking more. What? Who starts the the conversation about how I bet your mother? My bet is it was on the TV at the bar. Probably. That's probably where it started. Probably. So again, what could happen that they would cause them that mad well, that they start fighting again, in was, the car? It was most likely just somebody said one small thing, you know, micro uh, <laughs> aggression, aggression, you know, yeah. triggered the other guy. They had to pull over. Robin is crazy. You can't say that about her. <laughs> one guy was probably trying to get it canceled, and the other one just didn't want to be canceled. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Sounds to me like they need to go to Peru and just just fight it out. <laughs> yeah, New Year's. Get, get it all a brawl. Just get it all out. Yeah. All right, this 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 next story. If I told you guys that there was a man who punched two workers at a fast food restaurant over some problem, and you had to guess which ones, I I, I can think of a couple. I mean, I would think I can only think of two: McDonald's, <laughs> yes. What other ones would I? Would, have you heard of problems being at Popeyes? Popeyes, although that's usually shot or stab. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. They could have. A punch could happen. They could have left the gun in the, the glove box. Maybe <laughs> yeah. the baby had the knife, and well, they the, couldn't get it. And the died. felony purse was in the car. <laughs> the felony <laughs> purse was in the car. That's from another episode. Good call. <laughs> no. This was at McDonald's, uh, a place you never... You don't hear this at Chick-fil-A. No. Somebody doesn't punch somebody at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> My pleasure. Yes. He was too nice. My food came out correct and too quickly. <laughs> yeah. I can't the believe it. The place is too clean. This is ridiculous. <laughs> So anyway, it says uh, two McDonald's employees were assaulted by an irate customer who claimed that the workers botched his order. 
I, like, I think they can get and rid of claim. And that never happens either. Like. I, I think they can get rid of claim. I mean, it's pretty much, we can say it's a fact. They botched his order. I don't even know the story, really. I don't know what happened. We're going to say, I rule in the favor of the guy who did the assault that his order was botched. Yeah. It is totally screwed up. Um, it said uh, that uh, Victor Jimmy Castro. <laughs> See, <a> gangster? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Victor. <laughs> Victor Jimmy Castro. He placed an order at McDonald's inside a Walmart. So you got two strikes right there. You're not McDonald's. Oh, yeah. That's the double one. And it's inside a Walmart. That so, just added a whole other layer to it. You know, it's kind of on you at this point. You went to McDonald's. Okay, that's that's questionable. You went to McDonald's inside a Walmart. you got to expect you're not getting the right food. You're, you're not getting. You might not even get food. You may pay and get nothing. I mean, that's up to you. Um. Yeah. So he was inside. Now, if I had to, if I gave you five guesses of what state this happened in, I bet you wouldn't even guess Florida. <laughs> that was no. my first guess. Um. Let me think here. I'll Arizona. You, no. You have any? I'll give you three more. Okay. How about go with Kansas? No. California. No. One more. Wisconsin? No. Utah. <laughs> Utah. I never well, you know, those Mormons, they get kind of nuts sometimes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Guys, got, um, wife number six's order is completely messed up. <laughs> you don't know what it's like. She is going to be ticked off. Oh, and then, start and then she'll, away. Make, she'll make wife number four angry. That's right. Then they're going to start complaining about me. You're killing me. So in any way, it says that he went in there, uh, according to the affidavit he, alleged, affidavit, he allegedly struck the worker behind the counter, uh, and then he went, it says, then he went into the kitchen and struck another worker, it says, witnesses told police during the attack, which was captured on camera, that Castro declared, you got my order wrong. <laughs> of course you did. I would expect him to say nothing less than that. Like yeah. I said, I think that McDonald's is guilty of getting the order wrong. But if that's all it took to beat up a McDonald's employee, there wouldn't be one left standing. I think everybody would get their shot at it. I had a wrong order just this past weekend. Did you go McDonald's. punch somebody about it? I did not. Kick things over? No. I was pleasant to them. They, they got it ordered wrong by not giving you what you wanted or too much? Yes, I ordered four chicken tenders, which are, you know, they're like chicken strips, fairly large. I got home and I had four, four chicken, chicken nuggets. Oh, four chicken tuffies. No, I had four chicken nuggets. <laughs> Wait, what? That, so, that doesn't make, so you asked for the four tenders. Tenders. And I got home and I had four chicken nuggets. So the little ones. That's not even a menu item. Chicken nuggets? Well, I mean, the chicken nuggets, they're a menu item, but like four? <laughs> well, I, was, I mean, at the very pack. least, they just... It's like a kid's thing. I, yeah, oh, I okay. That, I guess that makes sense. I thought like the least you get was like six. But I didn't I order like, round it up? four chicken, ten, nut, or chicken nuggets. I ordered four chicken tenders. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so... Well, you were you were t- did, was that all your news stories? Oh, I've got one more, but we can save it to the end because it's going to kill the rest. It's going to kill the episode. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, let me let me do mine real fast. We're, we're about an hour here, but you know, let me read this one real quick. It's a it's a DUI arrest. Oh, um, we love the DUI. Arrest. Yeah, this getting was, them drunks off the road. This was in Peoria. A Peoria man blamed his liquor rich breath mm. on making out with his boozing girlfriend. According to a police report, <laughs> at 7.18 p.m. on Saturday, the Peoria County Sheriff's Office noti- was notified that a car had been driven off the pavement and into a field near the intersection of North Brimfield Road and West Cahill Road. A dispatcher warned deputies that the driver might be intoxicated, according to a sheriff's report. When the deputy arrived, the Brimfield Fire Department said that the 20-year-old driver had refused medical treatment four times the report stated. The department also said the driver who lives in Peoria smelled like alcohol and appeared to be intoxicated, the report stated. Also, an empty Miller Lite beer can was near the car. The deputy asked the man to step out of this car, which reeked of burnt cannabis, but he refused. As the two talked, the driver babbled incoherently, the report stated. <laughs> I well, told if you're him to babble. That's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incoherently. <laughs> so he, the, the the officer said, "I told him that what he said did not sound like English." The deputy wrote in the report. 
He then asked me for a lighter and said that it was 100% English, invoking profanity. The man refused to cooperate with the deputy, the report stated. The deputy forced the driver from the car and put him in handcuffs. The driver initially resisted the deputy, then began to cry. (laughs) Well, that's over your case. The driver refused to take a breath test. He then failed a field sobriety test, prompting the deputy to arrest him on account of DUI. At that, the driver stated he had taken multiple prescription drugs that had rendered him sleepy, the report stated. It's not, that's not alcohol. I'm taking drugs. That's my problem. <laughs> Got out of that one. That was smart thinking. Whew. Further, though, the deputy had found a soda can inside the car that smelled like liquor. The driver vowed that he had not been drinking, the report stated. He told deputies that the reason he smelled like alcohol was that he had been making out with his girlfriend and she had been drinking, the report stated. He also told the deputies he made love to his girlfriend because we make love. We're all adults here. (laughs) He he then admitted to drinking. This could be a bigger loser. He then admitted to drinking earlier that evening. Uh, I guess. I, uh, I mean, it's what, 7 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. That was uh, quite a story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, remember that. There's one for you to try. You smell like alcohol. Yeah. It's from my girlfriend. She kisses me a lot, and we have sex because we're adults. <laughs> you smell like alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. He says he told deputies he made love to his girlfriend because we make love. We're all adults here. That's what we do. <laughs> you know he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> they never mention her. No. So did he make out? They probably asked her who is. Then go you for don't a know her. She lives in Canada. <laughs> she just flew home. <laughs> So, all right. Well, that actually probably segues into your last well, one a little this, bit. Yeah, this one is going to put it over the top. So this was something I heard on the radio. I didn't even realize this was a thing. I, I guess it's, it is. It's been around for a little bit. Uh, it shows my naivete, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but this this is from uh, The Sun. So, I mean, it's, it, there also was an article about this in the New York Post. So it, it's not like it's the National Enquirer. So it sounds like you did research this out quite a bit. Well, I did, because I didn't want this to be like... like Come on, okay. Because you hear things on the new, on the radio, and you're like, okay, this is a bit maybe they're doing or something. But uh, anyway, uh, it says uh, the, the article is called "How Sex Robots Could Be Hacked to Murder You." Terminator style executions. <laughs> so first, I didn't know there were sex robots, <laughs> but apparently there are. Um, but this whole article, and they were talking about this. Apparently, there, there's this uh, a guy. Uh, he's a tech expert in a, at the, uh, a university in Australia, and he's he's done some research. And this is a, an actual thing that they're actually concerned with. That they said uh, hackers could gain full control of a robot's motor functions in the near future. Um, they said this. Maybe they could install they feature more smart, antivirus on them. <laughs> they feature smart technology, which is increasingly increasingly sophisticated. And it says that the demand for these robots continue uh, unabated. Modern cybersecurity. I know. Be careful. Unabated. <laughs> Modern <laughs> cybersecurity. I, I my, looked at me. <laughs> yeah, I, I held my tongue on that. Yeah. Says that modern cybersecurity has not kept up with the with the pace that experts warn. Says hackers could, uh, um, as a result, that the hackers could corrupt the vulnerable dolls and catch uh, their human owners. And it says with their pants down. <laughs> but I say, so one of the things that they're saying is that, it, that hackers would go in and even put, put a virus in it. So it's like, I got the thing is like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's got the girlfriend virus. What? No. Oh, my sex robot just wants to cuddle and hear about my day. <laughs> You get friends up. I come home and boot her up. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, come on. <laughs> now i got to get a sex mistress robot. <laughs> I'm getting turned on by my sex robot. And the next thing you know, you're just bringing chips in the bed, and these conversations come Pretty up. Pretty soon I'm supporting four sex robots and having sex with none of them. <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> but anyway, so I, as we was reading down, I was reading down through it. It said, again, the text expert, and he's from Australia's Deakin University. Uh, said that devious hackers could gain full control, uh, and something could have. Uh, some of them could even have deadly Terminator-style consequences. <laughs> and he said, in quotes, "Hackers can hack into a robot or robotic device and have full control of the connections, 
arms, legs, and other attached tools like knives or welding devices. <laughs> Once again, it's like knives or welding devices. <laughs> What is going on with people? I mean, uh, I don't know. Again, I'm naive. And there are probably people with fetishes, but a knife? I'm not trusting a robot with a knife. One. And a welding device? What is, what is happening what with the welding, the welding device? welding device? I mean, it's like, yeah, I'm going to do a little spot welding. <laughs> I said, maybe it's one of those welding robots from the manufacturer. The guy takes it home, throws a blonde wig on it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, Maybe the robot likes the welding device. <laughs> Ooh. So, I, I don't know. It just... Uh, <laughs> you come home and from work and the, the doll's on the bed. you got a, a welding yeah. shield and an arc welder next to it. <laughs> yeah. Setting the mood. Other attachments like... Other attachments like, like knives and welding devices. Maybe, they, maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years. I have never once had a need for a welding device or a knife. And what or, is the doll? Like, go-go Inspector Gadget? Is that good? <laughs> Take the rock. Oh, it's got the knife. It's not the one I wanted. Ah. Are there like uh, saw attachments? Yeah. Flamethrower attachments? If it, if it does attack you, how do you make that call to get help? <laughs> Mike, uh, that needs some help. What's going on? Um, I don't know. Uh, just somebody please help me. Come over here. Sure, but what, what's happening? What's going on? There's been a welding accident. Yeah, see, we're at, okay, what's an OSHA my over? Bedroom. My bedroom. We're going to send OSHA over. Was <laughs> oh, there somebody that can help you there right now? No. <laughs> well, I hear somebody talking. There's nobody here. <laughs> and do they have a talk like a welder? Do you call 911 or do you call tech support? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. The has been hacked. It sounds like i got to reboot it. It won't let me get near the button. I can't. <laughs> It's swinging around a battle axe and trying to <laughs> trying to weld me with a with a torch. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, they were talking about this. And again, read the article. There's a lot more of the article, and it really just devolves into that. I mean, but it just it just, just was insane. The sex doll goes full Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> And it's making really bad puns like Arnold and all these. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you got steamed up. <laughs> so, yeah, like, oh, so anyway, yes. PSA, be careful out there. Apparently, knife wielding, welding, sex robots are on the loose. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, or you uh, might be able to use that as an excuse. Mike, what happened to you? I was attacked by a knife wielding, wasn't <laughs> sex robot. <laughs> it's in the news. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's the end of that. That's the end of it. That time. might have been the end of a lot of stuff, <laughs> that but that was okay. it. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up after that with <clears throat> the holidays that you can celebrate this coming week. I don't know any other way to transition. No, no. So, uh, Monday, December 30th, you have Bicarbonate of Soda Day. So, Bicarbonate of Soda, baking soda. And it has a lot of uses. I'm just going to talk about a couple of them here that you can try. It says uh, it can be used to calm the indigestion. Quarter tablespoon, a quarter teaspoon into a water, drink it. Helps neutralize your stomach acid. Also can be used to treat insect bites and stings. It keeps your mouth healthy. I know people will brush their teeth yeah. with it. And probably the one most people know too controls odor. How many in the refrigerator? How many people have a box of baking soda <laughs> opened up in the refrigerator right now? That's probably been in there for thirty five years. Yeah, I don't think we do actually. <laughs> I see. We had one for I don't know when we got it, and we had it forever. I finally took it out and threw it away because I don't think it was doing any good after how long we've had it, but. You can do it. So anyway, bicarbonate of soda day. All right. And on Tuesday, the 31st, the last day of 2019 is make up your mind day. So if you are a person who struggles with decision making. Like a uh, woman. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> joke! It's a joke. Cancel, and everybody like it. Canceled. <laughs> it. That's it. We're done. Send comments addressed to Doug. At the, <laughs> so. And I joke like this, and everybody knows at home my wife rules the roost. So, well, some of the toughest decisions you might have to make are whether you want to do the knife or the welding. <laughs> <sense tonight. laughs> yeah, very, very true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So make up your mind. Yeah. So, so make up your mind day encourages you to um, oh. it, it, maybe if you struggle with decision making, you can have a list of pros and cons to help you decide. Maybe Venn diagrams. Uh, but anyway, for the the last the last day of 2019, go ahead and just just make up your mind and whatever decision you make, stick to them. Be decisive. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I keep the. Oh. <laughs> okay. Boom. All right. <clears throat> well, Wednesday, of course, being New Year's Day, also is Hangover Day. You know, yes. the night before, people been out partying a little too hard. The guy and in Peoria, he just celebrated. <laughs> he did. Yes. yes, yes. After a romp with his girlfriend the night before, he's probably. Uh, you know, sitting in Peoria County. Well, apparently she celebrated too hard. That's right. He didn't do anything. Yeah, he's got a secondhand drug, right? <laughs> yeah. He just kissed her and they had sex because that's what they do as adults. <laughs> well, so that's Wednesday is hangover day. It's all right. We slept all over. I don't even know if you said anything about it. <laughs> there really isn't a lot to say. You're hungover. <laughs> You're hungover. Move on. Yep. All right. Well, January 2nd, you know, we're starting off uh, New Year's. We make sure we lose weight, exercise. So, of course, what better we've way? got buffet day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what better way to start off your your resolution? Let's just kill that resolution on day two. And then you can get on with your life how you normally live it. So, uh, get out there. You can go to a buffet. And again, who doesn't like to go eat at a giant table with strangers all sticking their hands and utensils into it, putting it mm-hmm. on the plate and putting it back in there? Who knows what communicable diseases they're spreading around? Again, this is all coming from uh, <clears throat> me, the germaphobe. So <laughs> I know it, they have that sneeze guard, and that protects from everything. So you should be fine. <clears throat> you should be fine. Go out there and enjoy that buffet and uh, sharing all the, the saliva and the diseases that go along with it. Buffet day. Fight it. <laughs> well, on that lovely note, that, uh, <laughs> that image vivid description <laughs> of, of buffet. January 3rd, that is National Drinking Straw Day. Uh, that, an explanation. Don't get upset, is, people. I, I know, Our California get, listeners, please forgive Mike. This is a, a holiday that probably won't be observed too much longer, but. Uh, <laughs> National Drinking Straw Day is celebrated annually in honor of Marvin Stone, who received the patent for the very first, uh, the paper drinking straw in 1888. Well, it's paper, so yeah, it's, paper. it's redeemed itself. Somehow well, we got off until, the track. Though. Until it became plastic. Oh. Uh, I found this fascinating, though. The oldest drinking straw known was found in a Sumerian tomb dated 3000 BC. The straw was in a gold tube inlaid with a precious blue stone. It is believed the very first drinking straws were used for drinking beer. How so do you I, know that that was a straw, not like a fancy yeah, catheter? Yeah. So, <laughs> Leave the guy in a bladder problem. Yeah. Maybe that wasn't beer. Well, <laughs> I'm just asking. That's a valid point. I mean, I, I mean, it could be a straw. I just don't. I like it whenever they say experts found this and that. Like, really? Yeah, that, that was a straw. What does that look like to you? It's a gold silver. It's a straw. It's a straw. I think they used it for snorkeling. <laughs> Maybe he was using it for cocaine. I like, like to snort the yeah. cocaine. He was fancy and he got a gold one. Yeah. But uh, Sorry, yeah. Mike. No, I just no. fell over that one. It's a valid, valid point. Who knows? I'm trying to be a show with a journalist. Follow, these are the questions you have to ask. Find out there these things. Well, how do you ask somebody 3,000 years ago? <laughs> you, you do some digging. They did. Literally. Uh, Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay. Well, well drink drink Friday. Friday. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, on Saturday the fourth, it is spaghetti day. Ooh, I like spaghetti. You could drink spaghetti to a straw, maybe. You could at a buffet. At a buffet, yeah. You and your wife could reenact the scene from from Lady, Lady in the, the Tramp. Tramp. No, oh, very romantic. Oh yeah, yeah. No, go to a buffet. You can reenact that with a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, with a stranger. <laughs> well, you're at, you know, at the buffet. Slurp it up together, meet in the middle. It's very good. 
Yeah, it says that uh, National Spaghetti Day recognizes the long, thin, cylindrical pasta known as spaghetti. Spaghetti. We needed that description. There are records in the Jerusalem Talmud of Yttrium <laughs> claiming a kind of boiled dough was available in Palestine from the 3rd to the 5th centuries A.D. Hmm. Did it stop after that? Written records also mention a dried pasta was made and exported for the Norman king of Sicily in 1154. The use of spaghetti has grown and is no longer used for... Hold it. The use of spaghetti has grown <laughs> and is no longer used for spaghetti and meat sauce. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> what are, what are the usable word besides spaghetti? <laughs> I don't that, know. That's what I use it for. But <laughs> Spaghetti has been a worldwide favorite for I ages. You could use it for just about anything if you wanted to. <laughs> and still loved by millions today. You can create tons of pasta dishes using spaghetti. However, spaghetti is not a low-calorie food. If anyone says so, they might be an impasta. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> All right, Sunday, January 5th, and this is going to tie a nice companion piece with Spaghetti Day. <laughs> Keto Day! Keto Day, the opposite of Spaghetti Day. Yeah, Keto Day was actually created by, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the store, the Vitamin Store. The Vitamin Shop? The Vitamin Shop, thank you, the Vitamin Store. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Vitamin Store. <laughs> That's where I get my vitamins. Spelled in this old English fashion, the yeah, vitamin shopping. shoppy. Sorry, the vitamin shop. So in case you already didn't know how it works, a keto diet is where you get most of your calories from fat and a moderate amount from protein and very few from carbs. So it's like a typical breakdown. 70% fat, 25% protein, 5% carb. And oddly, coincidentally enough, that's exactly the breakdown of my body. 70% fat, 25% protein, and 5% carb. So, anyway, we have Keto Day. So, get out there and eat lots of fat and carb, you know, fats and proteins. Proteins, not carbs. Very little carb. Yes. So, happy Keto, everybody. Yes, it does work. It does. It's hard, it's hard, to, to, it's hard to stick on, but it's, it's, it does, uh, you will lose weight on it. It does work. All right. Well, I think that was, we an, interest, that, that was an interesting episode. <laughs> that was an interesting episode. Well, my we started, we started with anger. We started with anger. <laughs> And finished on odd. So we always appreciate Mike showing up and yeah. uh, helping us yeah. out here. Always fun to do it. Yeah. And uh, the next next uh, episode will be the first full week of uh, 2020. That's right. Wow. We're going to so, call that season two. Season two. Yeah. All right. Start off season two. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see what, what weird, wonderful... Yeah. Odd things we can come up with for yeah, the suggestion of Mike. We may we may make that a completely uncomfortable episode. We may. So uh, we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll see what it. we can come up with, and we'll try some stuff. So hopefully everybody's enjoying it. Again, we appreciate all the listeners that we do have out there. I know we joke about it some, but we do appreciate you guys listening, tuning in. Hopefully you're having fun. Feel free to comment to us either on Facebook or it's funny at comic dot com. Uh, you can also check us out on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, can message us, comment anywhere if you have any suggestions or comments. We always welcome those. That's right. But I think that'll wrap it up. Unless you guys have anything, I got nothing. Yeah, Otherwise, happy. we'll see you all in a week. Thank you again, Michael. Yeah, happy see New ya. Year's. Well, that's the show. Thanks again for listening to It's Funny That Makes It Okay. Be sure to join us next week for a break from the mundane. Please rate, review, and share our podcast. Feel free to send comments to it's funny at comic.com. Remember, if you see.
Well, that wraps up another episode. Thanks for listening. Please be sure to subscribe. And you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.